Good evening. I'd like to open the Deerfield Planning Board meeting on June 4th, 2018 at 7.06 in the evening here at the Deerfield Town Hall. I'll go over the agenda. I can't hear you. You really have to talk. You have to talk really closely into the microphone. Is that better? Yes. That's where you got to go. I'm going to go over the agenda. Uh, we did the call to order. We have the minutes of the previous meeting. We'll review mail. We'll take some public comment. And then we'll go into our new business, which is a public hearing for the proposed Dollar General retail development. This is the first hearing of a proposed retail establishment at the corner of Mill Village and Greenfield Roads. Then we'll take up some old business. Uh, then we'll take any other business not previously anticipated, 24 hours, 48 hours prior to the posting of this one. We'll schedule a date for the next meeting, and we can adjourn. Wow, well, this is very uh, reactive. Yeah, it's got to. All right. <clears throat> so just quickly, the part of the reason for the microphones is to make sure it gets on television. So we also want everybody in the room to hear, and everybody in the audience who's going to speak tonight, we actually set up a, a special... Um, a special microphone so that people have, will have to come up there when they have something to say. Um, so is there any planning board members, any uh, changes to that agenda? Is that all right? I'm just wondering, we could probably move the review mail. I looked at it quickly and there's nothing in there so urgent so we could view, review that probably at the end. That's good. Switch that. um, and I should uh, make note that we have a quorum. Uh, six of the seven planning board members are here. Max, Roger, Kip, Myself, John, Rachel, and Paul. So let's look at the minutes from the last meeting which Paul distributed. Any comments, or is there a motion to approve those minutes? It says A and R Savage Farm spells cross, as referenced in the book. Sorry. Then the plan is to split the lot into two lots to be called C and D, but we we endorse that, right? Yes. So it moved. We endorse the plan. Yeah, that's the vote. The next, the next is the vote. Okay, I just think. Um, that was this, the other one was lower road that we corrected from the previous one. Right, okay. The previous meeting. This one was... Actually. Is that clear to you? Does that seem clear to you guys? Yes. Okay. No, I'm okay with it then. Is everybody okay? Anything else? No. Good. I move to approve the minutes of May 14th, 2018. I second it. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I'll abstain. I wasn't here. Oh, 501. Yep. Good. I want to take a minute and reappoint. Oh, right. The one thing we did want to add to the agenda that uh, Kip reminded me is that we had elections, town elections, recently. So we have some potentially new members, but everybody that was a uh, Elected were currently members, so, but at the first or second meeting after those elections, we usually go through and appoint or elect a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk for the planning board. So, oh, any I, nominations for chair? Yeah, I, I nominate you to be the chair again this year. I second. Appropriate. And any other nominations? <laughs> Sorry, John. Yeah. From the floor. Um, and vice chair? Did we discuss this at all? No. no. Okay. So Kip has been vice chair. Um, I don't know if we should change that. Rachel, are you interested? Suggest Rachel for position. Yeah, you guys don't get to vote. <laughs> Sorry. Kip, we've appreciated you, but you're on other boards, so if. Uh, that doesn't matter to me at all. Yeah. Would you like to be nominated? I'm not nominating me. That sounds horrible. 
<laughs> I will nominate you. <laughs> I nominate Rachel for vice chair. Good. Second? I'll second you. All right. And clerk, Paul's been the clerk doing the minutes, doing a. I nominate Paul to be job. clerk, continuing his role. And I'll second that. Any discussion? No. Nope. All right, so we have a slate chair, me. Vice Chair Rachel, Clerk Paul, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I would like to clarify that as uh, for many years now, I've, I think I've been on the board for almost 12 years, and I, as chair, I am happy to facilitate the meetings. I don't always have that much time in between meetings, so I appreciate the help of other board members to do some of the planning, um, respond to some phone calls and things like that in between meetings and then help prepare the agenda and again the minutes Paul's been doing a good job so I'd like to continue that so appreciate it thanks so now at the beginning of every planning board meeting we have a time for public comment Public comment is meant for comment of things that are not going to be on tonight's agenda. If someone has a quick question or something, what we like to do is just get that out on the floor so that people don't have to wait around all night if, um, if it's something that can be taken care of very quickly. So I invite someone right now, anybody in the audience, if you have a public comment about something that is not on the agenda tonight, um, we could take a minute or two to hear about it. Yes. Amy Gaze and Schwartz, I'm on, live on Evans Lane. This does have to do with something on the agenda today, but it's probably something that needs to be talked about before the public hearing. Um, my understanding, my reading of the regulations 5424 is that the abutters are, that it requires the planning board to no notify abutters 14 days ahead of the hearing by, by certified mail in writing of the hearing. And to my knowledge, the, the abutters on Mill Village East, including the condominium association that owns land did not get those letters. We got empty envelopes. Certified mail came, the envelopes were empty. So, and I, and I understand that people on that, Mill Village West also did not receive letters. All right, so that's, thank you very much. That is certainly something that's on the agenda, so yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll take it up when we get there. Anything else that's not, on, not pertaining to the agenda tonight? All right. So before I open the, um, the public hearing for tonight, I'd like to just read a few things to remind both uh, planning board members and the public about public participation at committee meetings. Um, the, the town of Deerfield welcomes everyone to its public meetings. All meetings of town boards and committees shall be open to the public and conform to the open meeting law. We are your elected public officials, and we believe community participation is important and vital to understanding the programs and operations of our town government. We endeavor to inform and to listen. During meetings, we strive to find a balance between hearing from members of the community and conducting required business. In order to achieve, achieve this objective, the following rules and procedures are established for public meetings. So as I mentioned already, public comment time will be allotted at each meeting. Another one of the rules is that the chair or their designee shall preside over the meeting. In this role, they will, they will acknowledge speakers from the public, determine the length of time for public participation, and ensure comments are appropriate. During any part of the meeting, the public may be recognized by the chair to speak on an item before the committee. All remarks will be addressed through the chair of the meeting rather than directly to other participants. Comments made by anyone at a meeting should be at all times respectful. If a speaker persists in improper conduct or remarks, the chair may rescind the individual's right to address the committee. Deflammatory or abusive remarks are always out of order. Speakers may offer such objective criticisms of town operations and programs that concern them, but in public session, the committee will not hear personal complaints of personnel. Under, any, under most circumstances, administrative channels are the most proper means for disp disposition of legitimate complaints involving town employees. So I read that, and there's copies of it here, and it's something that uh, we try to do at all of our public meetings. So I'm sure we'll all adhere to that. 
So now I'd like to open uh, the public hearing by reading the notice of public hearing. The Deerfield Planning Board will hold a public hearing on June 4th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, pursuant to sections 5400 and 2230 of Deerfield Zoning Bylaws to review plans submitted by Bowler Engineering on behalf of South Deerfield DG LLC for a site on Mill Village Road. Assessor's Map 132, lots 29 and 30. For construction of a 9,319 square foot retail store and associated parking and utility infrastructure. Copies of the site plan and site plan application are available for review at the town offices during regular business hours. Any person interested or wishing to be heard should appear at the time and place designated. The public hearing notices were published in the uh, uh, newspaper of record, which is the Greenfield Recorder, on May 18th and May 25th. So with that, I open the public hearing. And because we did have the one comment, one of the other regulations of public hearings is that abutters are notified. So that's maybe one of the first things we can, we can check. I know in the application there was a list of abutters that should have received information about the hearing. The other thing we need to take up with um, before we uh, do the application is to make sure it was duly uh, received by the town and fees paid. And so I think there's going to be, we'll have some discussion about what the fee is. Um. All right, so I'm looking for proof of the... Uh, Abutters were notified. I don't see it here, so maybe I'm missing it. Let's see if you see anything in that folder. All the posting. Yeah. All right. Well, let's we can let's engage the applicants on this one. So, so normally what we do during the public hearings is to get a overview from the applicant, find out who the applicant is, make sure their uh, application is correct, hear um, a summary of the project, and then we open it up to public comment. So I know some people were here last uh, at the last meeting, but I think um, we want to kind of start from square one tonight. So if the applicants could introduce themselves, that would be terrific. And as I said, uh, we're on TV, apparently in four different towns tonight, very uh, popular. Um, so if you speak into the microphones, that'll be great. Certainly. Can everybody hear me with this, or? No. 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 How about now? No? No, the, you push the button to be not. You, that button yeah. mutes the mic. Right, not. how about now? It's Better. coming up. There you go. I have to eat it? So it's coming, coming up? Yep, yep, All right. Okay. Um, for the record, Austin Turner with Bowler Engineering. I'm joined this evening uh, by Patrick Natriba from Lascotti Development. He's representing the party who has control or a controlling interest in the property, if you will, and we're working with Patrick on this application. I know we were here uh, a couple weeks ago, and we had done just a preliminary discussion with the planning board to introduce the project, go through kind of a high-altitude overview. We got into some detailed discussions. What I thought we would do tonight is do that as part of the, the formal public hearing process, if you will. We can reintroduce some of those topics, we go through them, um, and then what I really want to do is get your feedback, thoughts, answer questions, and then obviously we'd get to the public discussion part of the program as well. All right, so the name of the applicant is South Deerfield DG Series LLC. Is anybody here from that organization? That would be Patrick that, and myself, correct. That's our organization, yeah. that's correct. That, that's the entity that this project is being proposed under. That's the, the, the entity through which Patrick owns the pro or will own the property under. So my company is Lascotti Development. One of our entities is South Deerfield. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then you're with the engineering. That's correct. Firm. Great. 
<clears throat> okay. And the property owners, are they here tonight with us or? Not sure, they're not with Patrick and I here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I had a, a couple questions on the um, application. So the first one is the fee, um, that it hasn't been fully paid. Right, we've been, we've been working um, with your staff to, there was some question about what was the appropriate fee schedule. Right. Um, we haven't received that formal determination, but we'll be sending a check as soon as that is determined for us. All right, because I think you were looking at, at the older, um, so the site plan review is the 250 basic fee, which you did pay, and then it's $10 per 1,000 square feet of land disturbed. And I think our old version had um, $10 per 100 square feet. Got it. So okay. at that, which um, over the past about a year ago, we revised that. Okay. So, so we'll based on that, that, we figure out what the land disturbance, not just the 9,000 square foot building, but the whole land disturbance, uh, we figure out what that is, and that's how we calculate that fee. Sure. So right. what we'll do is, um, provided the board is comfortable, of course, we'll work directly with your staff, calculate that. Patrick will have a check right. FedExed out. And then the other thing on the application, I noticed the applicant's signature was on here, but not the owner's signature. If different from the applicant, so um, we have a purchase and sale agreement with the owner to file on their behalf for purposes of permitting in front of this board as well as any other. What one of the documents that we provided as part of the application was the the pages or page from the notice of agreement which authorized Patrick to file applications on behalf of the landowner. All right, so we'll. I just want to double check. We can check with our town council if that's appropriate or not. Okay. For and, our, I mean, our forms usually have the owner. So. Sure. And if for some reason your your council determines that we need that signature, we can get that signature. It's All right. Good. All right. So then the first uh, question that already came up is notifying the abutters. Do you know what was done in regards to notifying the abutters? Uh, we, we worked with the town, obviously. Um, the abutter notifications went out via certified mailing, and I, I didn't see them actually get hand delivered, so I don't know, you know, what was if there were the the green card, if you will, was inside the package, but all the certified mailings were sent by the post office to the abutters list. I believe there's a copy of the abutters list in the application, so those individuals would have been notified by certified mailing. And normally, I get um, in our folder, we usually get the green cards right. to show that they were. They were, in fact, delivered, and I don't, I don't have that in my folder tonight. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist, um, but that will be something we're going to. Now, does the town does the town actually mail those out, or does the applicant do it? I believe it's person's office. So, all right. I did see the list of abutters, and it was, I mean, you get it from the town, so that correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, all right. So that's um, so we'll continue, um, but that is something that we're gonna we'll look into. But I know that is something that the town and the applicants do together is to prepare the abutters list and make sure people are informed. So we'll have to figure out. Yeah, so we'll have to figure out if that was a, a town thing or an applicant thing. Um, the posting, uh, the two postings in the recorder and on the town hall, I think are the town. required ones, and, and that was done. And the abutters. So, so I would suggest that we, uh, we're not going to solve that tonight, so we'll, we'll look into that, um, but we'll continue tonight's meeting. So great, if you can give us an overview of the, of the project then. Certainly what I'll do real quick is just put a graphic up for everybody, yep. and then I'll, we'll go through. Yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to hear from the applicant, uh, and then we'll take, take public comments. As everybody, I'm sure, is aware, um, Patrick and I are working with Dollar General as a tenant here on this property. Um, Patrick would be the landowner and would retain the property where Dollar General would be a tenant in the building, just in case any, that question comes up frequently. Uh, the way uh, this property kind of came to be is pa Patrick and I you know, were contacted by the folks over at Dollar General. Um, they will then, once they've kind of selected a property or a location, they will ask Patrick and I to kind of go through 
the, the customary due diligence, you know, making sure it's zoned appropriately, that uh, geotechnic, the geotechnical considerations, the dirt, are, are suitable to accommodate things. You know, we do the survey and the title research and things like that, and we're probably doing this work in the background for a year or a year and a half in some cases after Dollar General has selected a location and has contacted Patrick and myself. I'm just a little bit of context in how we get here. It's not instant coffee by any means. We've done a lot of homework um, prior to being here. Um, the name is a little bit unfortunate. Uh, it implies that it would be you know, the, the dollar store, when in fact, really the, way, the best way to describe it at least um, would be the product line would probably be similar to what you'd envision in, in a more of a, a pharmacy setting, like a Walgreens or a CVS, but minus the pharmaceutical component, to put to put that into context. It, it's not going to be a dollar store, like the Dollar Tree variety, where everything in the store is a dollar. The name is a little bit misleading in that regard, but just to give you some kind of association, while well, it might not be perfect, it's similar. Um, the, the property, as everybody is aware, is on the corner of Mill Village Road and Greenfield Road. Where we've been working with DOT on the access driveway, the, the driveway there has been previously permitted as a as a commercial use. Uh, what we're doing, we're modifying that permit with DOT for the specific use in the development program that is before the planning board. So that that conversation is ongoing. We've had good conversations with them initially. So what we're showing on the plan is representative of our, of our discussions with the folks over at DOT uh, thus far. But that application is. Obviously, still, still under review, and we're running it concurrently with the rest of the entitlement process. The store that we're considering, as was mentioned last time, is about 9,100 square feet. It's um, that generally centrally located on the property here, um, with the parking, the, the balance of the parking, located in the front of the facility. Um, in terms of dimensional requirements, the the site plan has been designed to comply with the dimensional requirements, bulk zoning, you know, lot coverage, building setbacks, th th those sorts of things. Uh, one thing that, I, that we've, we had some, some meetings with our immediate abutters, and that was part of kind of an initial outreach program with them. And one of the things that they had asked us to do was to, to provide as much buffering as possible from our program, which we're happy to accommodate, and that's what you'd expect, right? We want to kind of provide that, that buffer. Um, as part of that, what they asked us to do was eliminate, you can kind of see them maybe kind of, you'll see them on the site plans. There's about eight or ten spaces right on this side here. On the site plans, we've identified as potential future parking spaces. And, and the reason being is we're providing about eight spaces less than is required by zoning. But it's our understanding that the planning board, um, if you found it to be appropriate, of course, has the ability to, to waive that parking requirement. We can accommodate those spaces without the need for relief from the zoning ordinance, and it would still be fully compliant with your dimensional requirements. In conversations with our, our neighbors, they ask that we don't build those spaces uh, because it provides opportunities for us to further buffer, enhance landscaping, pull the fence further away, you know, thing, things of that nature. Where, and are, the, it would where are the extra eight spaces? I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Uh, they're right about in this location right here. Okay, all right, yeah. thank you. And they're, they're on the plan set as well, identified. Okay. Uh, that would require additional lighting, th things like that. Um, so we're happy to accommodate it if you think it's appropriate to include them. Um, our opinion is that operationally, we don't need those eight spaces, and it's not going to be under-parked if those eight spaces are not included. Uh, we're doing what was asked of us from our neighbors, but that's a conversation for us to have with you. And we'll proceed as you deem appropriate. And that is, that is true that it's the planning board who can reduce parking spaces by special permit. Most special permits in town here go through the ZBA, but in the case of parking, it is the planning board. So that, that's appropriate to have that discussion with us. OK. And, and you know, that, that's, we, we had included the, that application as part of this, part of this process. The, the specific use is uh, approved by special permit that's going to be with the zoning board, obviously. And we've been advised that the first part of our kind of the link in the chain, if you will, is working with the planning board through this process, at which point, presumptively, we would advance to the zoning board and have that discussion with them. So 
we are proceeding like that. We've tabled that application for now just because we want to make sure we step through this linearly and, and go through that process the way it's intended to be gone through. With uh, this particular program, just kind of operationally, I'll walk you through some of the pieces here. The access is obviously going to be on, on Greenfield Road in the location that was previously permitted by DOT. We're going to be maintaining that curb cut location and in, as described in that permit. Um, the driveway then obviously comes in, um, main parking in the front, and kind of the, the operational consolidation would be here on that north northeast corner of the property uh, where deliveries would happen in that corner. Customarily, deliveries are once a week usually um, during store hours and usually last about a half hour or so um, where they the driver will deliver whatever product the store needs to restock and then pull out any of the pallets or what have you that the store doesn't have and that are stored in the storage part of the building. Store hours are seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. What we've done too, and you can see on this graphic, uh, which might not be represented on the plans yet because we've been speaking with neighbors and getting some of that direct feedback. This graphic is representative of that, and it's, the ink's probably still wet, frankly. What we've done, we were asked as part of those discussions to include an eight-foot tall solid wood screen fence along our northeast property boundary with landscaping in front of that fence to further buffer it. But as part of those discussions, it was also asked that we extend it further down to kind of, I'm going to call it the halfway point, um, just past the intersection on Plain Road. So this area here would be a solid eight foot tall wooden fence. And then in front of that, you can see what's represented graphically by those kind of little green circles would be additional landscaping. We could you know, do that in the form of arborvitaes or something that's not going to lose its leaves in the wintertime, um, things like that. So we're, that was in direct response to feedback we've received thus far. Which side of, of the fence? Other, it would be, on the, sort of the fence would be here. And then we'd put the plantings between the road and the fence so okay. that you wouldn't see just solid wood fence. You'd right. actually see the plantings, which would buffer it a little bit right. or break it up. And it's eight foot high? Correct. Because I think the plan said six, I it, think. We've agreed to go to eight. Okay. So we're going to go an eight foot tall right. solid wooden fence. So the plan, the, the plan does not, re I don't, does the plan um, reference the, the fence? I just don't. The, the, the fence is referenced. Um, this graphic has evolved based on those discussions. So, so that's it, why it's not there. Got correct. It. And, yeah. and, and it. I, I expect it. that there will be some modifications to the plans out of these discussions. Yep. So. Mm -hmm. Good. What we've done, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, is there a question? No, no, no. Oh, okay. What we've done from a, a stormwater perspective, um, the site's generally pretty flat. It's got a gradual, gradual slope up from Greenville Road to the back, but for all intents and purposes, especially for New England, it's a flat site. Uh, we've included a surface stormwater basin in the corner over here, and really because, generally speaking, the site topographically works from a higher spot up here and works down towards the corner where it kind of goes into the right-of-way. It's obviously a very wide right-of-way, but there's existing kind of overland drainage infrastructure that is in that right-of-way. And part of what we're tasked with doing when we design this, and we have the drainage report as part of the application, is you know, meeting both the local and the state standards for the stormwater infrastructure. And that, that includes an analysis of the existing hydrology as well as the, as well as the the post-development hydrology and then showing a comparison of the two. And generally, stormwater goes kind of from this upper left corner down to the lower right. And that's why that basin is located in that corner, is to kind of go with the natural, hydro natural hydrology where the low spot is. And that, that basin has an outlet control structure, which is designed to hold back you know, peak flows in the larger storm events, allow them to slowly infiltrate through the ground, and then in the higher storm events, it has that slow release that blends with the hydrology and, and the, the calculated runoff from the existing condition. So uh, that, that basin there has been designed uh, to accommodate up to the 100-year storm event, which is the storm event that has the 1% chance annually of occurring. And, and in Massachusetts now, with the 
higher precipitation tables and things like that. We've included that data in the report designed you know, with regards to that. So the utility infrastructure we're proposing is, with the exception of a, a private on-site sanitary disposal system, would be a connection to the available infrastructure uh, out in Millville Road, be it water, electric, telecommunications, uh, gas, um, and then we'd have the private uh, septic system, which generally is going to be located in the, the southeast corner of the property. From, uh, I'm only pausing because if there's, if there's questions, I don't want to just kind of plow through this. But No, we kind of want you to plow through it and then we'll have lots okay, of questions. Okay, so consider the plow down. Yep. We'll go. All right. So uh, with, with lighting. And just, just so you know, we're, it's, it's likely that we're going to hire a, um, uh, you know, an engineering review third party to review this. So we'll get into the technicalities at that point. Uh, absolutely. But, that's, but, that's why if, if, yeah. if I'm, I'm not intentionally glossing over the super nerdy stuff, but we'll come back I'm doing it. it because I expect yes. to get into that later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, from, from a lighting perspective, what we, we have here are going to be LED lights. They're going to be cut off uh, on both the, the rear and on the vertical. So you, you don't get that up glow like a, a car dealer. You get forward throw down, downward, and they're super efficient because they're LED. You'll, you'll hear that off, sometimes referred to as dark sky lighting. That's the same idea here, is that it's forward throw, no upward glow, and it's only enough lighting to be appropriate for the site, but not overly so where it's, it's kind of the what would be customary and, and appropriate for the location, but you're not lighting up the parking lot like it's, you know, noon. The, the lights are on for normal store operation. They'll stay on for approximately a half an hour after the store closes because there will be employees in the facility who are getting ready for the following day, and they're there for about a half an hour after close. Um, when the store is closed for operation, the, all of the lights, including the, the sign, are turned off. Only one wall light on the building, usually about the entrance, and then there are egress points on either side. A wall light will stay on, which illuminates kind of the area around the sidewalk, but isn't throwing light forward. And that's just for security purposes. It's much like I leave the garage light on at home at night. So it's no different than that. But the remainder of the lights, including inside signs, pole-mounted lights get turned off at night. And there will be pole-mounted lights out in the parking lot? Can you show? That's correct. So uh, I'm going to do my best. Circle. There's one right there, another right there. And then these, these front spaces here yeah. are handled um, usually by some of the the wall mount, wall mount lights that are just to illuminate kind of this general, general parking in the sidewalk out in front of the, out in front of the building. The project, which we can get into in detail, it's not the most glamorous thing to talk about, but it has erosion and sedimentation control plans in there as well for the kind of interim period between um, when the site is being prepared and, and when it's in its final point. And then ultimately, when we get to construction, the project would file what's referred to as a stormwater pollution prevention plan with the EPA under their general permit for stormwater controls during construction. And we've included uh, the erosion control plans, details, language, et cetera, as part of that, part of that plan package as well. So this, this review that we'll do is also the stormwater, uh, for the stormwater permit, obviously. And you know the water table is high in South Deerfield, so that's a that's big issue when we're, we really analyze that pretty closely. Yep, so. we're, we're aware, and, and Patrick and I, as, as part of this, what I was referring to before, th this wasn't instant coffee, and we kind of get into it and then figure it out as we go. Uh, what we've done and what I've included in the drainage report is Patrick hired a, a licensed geotechnical engineering consultant to do the subsurface explorations to determine what the dirt is, mm. its properties, is it suitable, you know, whatever its hydraulic characteristics. Um, things like that. And we did test pits out here, too, so we're familiar, and that data was included with the drainage report. So um, we know what the soils are like, groundwater conditions, et cetera. And that, that part of what you're referring to kind of drove site elevations and things like that to make sure we could accommodate yeah. specific features. I think that, that's kind of the... The, the big picture overview, I think that gets us back up to speed in terms of at least introducing the project. I know we're going to get into some of the super specifics, so I'm, with that, I'm happy to get into the specifics.
All right, let me just ask you a, a, another big issue that comes up is, is traffic and uh, numbers of cars and customers expected. Certainly. And so what, what we've done, and that's a good, good question, and I didn't omit that intentionally, but we had prepared uh, an assessment of the trip generation that would be expected for this facility. We did that uh, consistent with the DOT standards for that, which has us use ITE, which is the Institute of Transportation Engineers. I, you, you're probably familiar with that. It tells us in terms of this land use classification what the projected trips would be during the, the, the peak assessment period. And we provided that document, and what we found is it's well below um, the, the 100 trips in that period, which is the point at which DOT would have you look at an, an additional analysis. We've done a number of facilities, not necessarily Dollar General, Patrick and I, but other similar facilities with you know, higher generations, but still less than 100. And when you're in that window, DOT is more than, uh, finds that document to be more than suitable for their needs as we go through the, the driveway permitting process. Uh, where we are in terms of the trip generation, In that memo, what you'll find is that the highest projected trip would be uh, during the weekday peak PM, kind of the four to four to six, and it was 64. And everybody thinks, oh my God, 64, that's a really, really high number. But what that means is that if, if I were to pull into a facility or any driveway, for that matter, that equates to one trip. And then me leaving equates to another. So it's, it's doubled. So when you look at it that way, that 64 is really... 32 vehicles, and then on top of that, what we're, what's embedded in that as a level of conservatism is we're assuming that that number says it doesn't differentiate between it's a new trip or it's a pass-by trip, where in a pass-by condition, that vehicle is on the roadway, and it was already there. It's not making a specific trip to get to this facility. With a use like this, it's more a convenience use than a destination use, and it's going to be passed by traffic. They're, they're not Bass Pro Shops or something where at home, Bass Pro Shops, people come from two and a half hours away to go there. It's not that. It's, oh, I'm on my way back and forth from A to B, and this happens to be a point between A and B. And when you look at it in that regard, it's a significantly low generator of traffic, and that it's not generating its own traffic. That traffic is on the roadway. And, and DOT, when we... we they're very much acknowledging of that condition, and it's something that factors in when we review with them in terms of what impact or, or lack of a facility like this has on the surrounding roadway network. All right, so we'll, we'll probably come back to that. We might have different questions than DOT, so. Absolutely, uh, no, ab yeah. that, that, that's fair. I, I'm, I didn't mean to imply that. No, 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 they, I'm just yeah. saying, I'm just letting you know that we might look into that more. Uh, of course, and yeah. oftentimes what we find is when you retain an independent consultant, that's something you ask them to look at. Right. Good. All right, well, that's a good overview. Anything? Is that good for you? The um, planning board, any, any big questions now? Otherwise, I'd like to, we're going to have a lot more opportunity. Mm -hmm. If you have a couple of big questions or something. No? All right. So, Max. Yep. Didn't you you got to speak into the microphone. Oh, why didn't you uh, look at exiting, you know, at, enter one place and exit on the side street to so, cut it's down a, on the left turns heading north? It's, it's, a, it's a great question. And it's something, I actually, I can't say we considered it, but one thing we look at, especially in a condition like this, where you've got a state road out front and you've got, you know, a, kind of a, a local or rural road on the side is not wanting, wanting to introduce the commercial traffic onto that local road where you have a state road, which is intended for not, not its sole purpose, but is better suited for things like this. And then on top of that, one of the things we heard in our discussions with the folks next door and in the neighborhood was, I think it's um, Yankee Candle here, which I'm well-versed with. I went, to, I went to UMass, and that's where I did most of my Christmas shopping as a student. Um, they have a lot of deliveries and trucks out there, and they would prefer that we don't do any more commercial traffic, be it exiting or entering on that road. So we consolidated movements down to where the existing driveway was permitted with Mass DOT previously. It's a warehouse over there. It is. We, we've been told it's, it's fairly active, and they wanted to keep it 
and, and we have a driveway with DOT that they permitted for a commercial facility. We were maintaining kind of the intent of their previous approval. All right, so that's a good overview. So at this point, I'd like to open it up to public comment. Since there might be a lot of comments, we actually have a sign-up sheet up front here. Um, so I'd appreciate it if, if people want to line up at the mic and then, and then sign up, and we'll take you in order um, that you sign up or, or get to the mic. Um, and then as time permits, we can have more, we can hear from more people. But so I'd ask people to, um, to come and- your name as well. Yeah, so you got to write your name and address, so we want to have Deerfield residents uh, hopefully first. And then when you start to speak, if you could just uh, state your name so the clerk can keep putting in the minutes. I'd like to also add that um, in addition to the planning board members, um, Pat Smith from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments is here. She's our technical assistance person for a lot of the work we do here at the planning board, so we appreciate her presence to help us with process and some other rules and regs we might not be as familiar with. So we can start, if you've already, if you've already signed, signed up, you can in, pass right. the uh, clipboard back in line there. That'd be great. Yep. <laughs> does, it, does it bend down? There we go. There you go. Can you hear me? Is this on? Hey, that's okay. great, actually. Hi, I'm Lily Dwight. I'm at 45 South Mill River Road. I am not in a butter or anything. I'm a nerd, though. So my question for you is, what is the average distance traveled by Dollar General's customers? So at a public hearing, as I stated earlier in the evening, it's the public comment is... Oh. Um, here's what I'm trying information to Information that goes out to us, to oh. the planning board, and then if, if we need an answer right away, then we'll direct okay. it to the applicant. Otherwise, we take it into consideration, and then we'll try to figure okay, it out so later. so here's what I'm so, trying to understand. And what I just want to avoid okay. is this not a conversation between 100 people here tonight. I, thank you. Sorry. Yep. Um, so what I'm trying to understand is this conversation about traffic and 32 vehicles a day. And does that, so it is like what, how much custom does Dollar General require for solvency? What are the average numbers of visitors in Greenfield and what is the average distance traveled by customers? Part of what I'm trying to understand is the sighting in Deerfield, the number of people who live in this area, uh, what is the average income of the Dollar General customer, how far do they travel to get there, so is Dollar General going to stay in business when it comes to Deerfield? That's my mm -hmm. nerdly question. Good question. Thank you. First name. Lily. What's that? Lily. Next. Hey, John. Uh, Mike Gilmore. Lee. Live on Five Allen Drive in South Deerfield. Uh, my question is more uh, the Mike planning Gilmore. policy, uh, open meeting law. Uh, my question is with respect to the notification that was made to the abutters, and there's a question with regard to that in your receipt of that, that I believe if that's not retained, this meeting needs to be canceled because it was not properly notified. So I would ask you to check your policy. Mm -hmm. So let me ask a uh, I'm gonna, uh, quick counsel here is, um, so one of the determinants of a public hearing is that it gets posted in the public and, how do you remember what the wording is there? We can go look at it. It's 300 butter, uh, butters within um, 300 feet. So one thing that we, do you have in our, I know we talked about this several years ago, whether the town is the one that actually mails them? The town actually mails yes. it according to this. I can't say how it happens in this particular instance, but according to the bylaws, the town would mail it and the applicant pays, pays for it. Pays. All right. 
And I think we did that years ago to, um, to try to ensure that all the right abutters did get the notification. Um, Oh, good idea. But thank you when for the reminder. You so what we were what we were reading was the uh, the portion of the zoning bylaws that does require that there be a uh, notice sent to the abutters 14 days in advance of the hearing. That is one of the requirements for notice of the meeting. It appears that that may not have happened uh, for all the abutters in this particular instance. All right. So let's check with. So we, I think you would need to check with uh, the staff. Um, the, the so we've been told if that- In fact, it's not properly noticed. You would need to re-notice right. and reopen the public hearing and go through all of these same materials again for the benefit of those people that had not received the notice. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point, we've been informed that our uh, planning board staff mailed them. Um, so I guess I, I, I over respect respectfully um, what where Patrick and I are happy to continue this discussion and start from scratch the important thing for us and I think everybody in the room and the board most is to do this the right way and if there's any question about something having not been noticed correctly or mailers not having been done properly yep. we can continue this discussion to a date certain and work it with the, the town and staff to make sure that that was done properly and we're happy to do that yeah. so we want to make sure everybody gets their chance to be heard well i'm uh, thank you those receipts are not in the no. and that's what i said usually they are um, but they're not they could be in the building and i understand um, that maybe some people signed it and then opened it only to find that right so the question is whether if they were empty envelopes then that's that's another issue so i don't know is there a uh, well, that's what I'm going to say. Is a show a hand of a butters who didn't, who got an empty, who didn't get notification? Who got empty notification? So I'm, I'm just curious. So all of you people got a, an envelope that was empty. Did any of you contact the town and ask them what it was about? Yes. Yes. And what? Were, I'm just curious. What were you told? Thank you. So did everybody not get them, or just certain people? I don't want to play my and I didn't get anything. Did you, did you sign that list of a butters? I think it's 300 feet distance. That yes. was, yeah. Everyone so feet. depends on how far you live, not just one road. Butters to a butters, butters right? Butters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would they be notifying the condo association or members of? All right, so I mean, I anticipate that there's, there's going to be a couple meetings about this. So um, if we, a couple more. There's nothing in the. If I we, don't uh, see it. yeah. Well, why don't we take send out some letters and have it re reconvene? We, we, um, we, can, we can we can do the certified mailing list. What we'll do is we'll work with your team to make sure that it's done. Well, yep. it was done the right way. It sounds like something got wires got crossed. Yep. So we'll do it. We'll redo it. Yep. Um, we have the abutters list that the town prepared yep. for. I'm sure per the regulations that govern that. Yep. We'll work with that. We'll get it re-noticed. Um, what, I, what I'd respectfully ask is that the board continue to a date certain just so we know and we can work that out. Yep. And we'll get the mailers. And as a matter of fact, we can do that. We have forms here that can uh, to continue public hearings. And then I think what we would do to provide the planning board is comfortable with this is we'd start from the beginning. We didn't cover a tremendous amount of ground here tonight. Mm -hmm. I'll start from the beginning, and we'll just reboot like it's the first time to make sure we cover all the bases right off the bat. Sounds good. Yeah. So we have our, um, we normally meet the first Monday of every month. That would be July 2nd. Which would be July 2nd. July 4th is a holiday, it's a Wednesday, so I think we could still be here that Monday, if that still works. July 02? Yep. I'm okay with that. Planning board, we should have a quorum. Is there any concern about July 2nd? July 2nd. <clears throat> Hearing no concern. Um. The, f the following weekend is the holiday weekend. 
Well, the fourth is a Wednesday. At seven o'clock, same time. Six four. All right, so we'll sign this. Uh, it's called a hearing continuation request. So could you get them to? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, wait, I got to do this. Planning board. Continuing type of hearing. Public hearing. And then the applicant's name goes there, and then they sign it. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we, we apologize if the, if the confusion was on our part, but we appreciate your flexibility on this. No, no problem. Like I said, we want to do it right. Yeah. So now that we've decided to continue the, or to, to redo the public hearing uh, July 2nd in the town hall at 7 p.m., are there any uh, other, well, they're not public hearings anymore, but any comments are still uh, uh, always appreciated for the planning board. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Bill Mayor, PC 16, Captain Lathrop Drive. I just had one question in regards to the July 2nd uh, time frame. There will be a large number of residents, I'm sure, traveling for the 4th of July holiday. And I'd like to make a request to the board, please, that this meeting is not scheduled for two days before July 4th, but actually pushed further so we can have enough residents here for the meeting. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's summer, so we're always going to miss somebody, probably. Um, we definitely want the most input. By the way, um, we did receive some written letters, and we appreciate that. We take them at any time. So anybody that wants to have anything in writing, uh, please feel free to send that to the planning board's attention. Um, so there's a request to have it on the 10th. The year or no, what it would be second, second time seven, ninth. Is that the next Monday? Ninth, yep. Um, or the 25th. We often lose a planning board member when it's not the um, first Monday, right. so I'd hate to schedule and not have a quorum. Well, while we're here, do we have any idea of availability? I well, agreed. that's why I yeah. checked on the second. It looked good on the ten, on the ninth. Um, what, the, what did I just say? The second thing here. Well, Some people are requesting request. that they, they feel like a lot of the public won't be available. <laughs> it is customary for the planning board to take applications in a, in a time efficient manner. Um, we're, we're available on, whether we do that on or the not, second, and if everybody's available on the second, I think we'd like to just continue that. Because, I mean, I, I get it. There was kind of a, uh, yeah, there was an error. Mm -hmm. But I don't want that error all of a sudden to push it six weeks down the road either. Well, I wouldn't. I won't be here on the ninth. That's my. Why don't we just stay the second. Um, so it looks like we'll have a quorum. Actually, a pretty full planning board on the second. So I'm, uh, I'm inclined to stick to that date. And I hope everybody who wants to be here can be here and or uh, talk to friends and send them with your Taking your issues or put things in writing. Um, I will make a quick comment now that the, the planning board, in case people haven't been to many planning board meetings, which I'm looking out there and I see new faces, so it's very exciting to have new people here at the planning board. We have a, a set of bylaws that we follow, and those bylaws are also on the website, and I'd ask anybody that's uh, interested to go look at those bylaws. Our job is to follow those bylaws, which are voted on by, by all of you, the, town, the residents of the town of Deerfield. So we are, that's what we look at when we're looking at a site plan review and a stormwater permit. 
Um, we will, as I mentioned, we're going to look at traffic. We might request a traffic study to really dig deeper into that because there is concerns at this intersection on that road. Um, it, it's been pointed out there have been accidents at that intersection in the past, and we certainly want to make sure things uh, get safer in town whenever we have development. Um, a stormwater analysis, we always will, um, I'm sure we're going to hire a technical engineer to look at that. Um, there's also then, you've got environmental concerns as well. So there's a, there's a few different things, and uh, so I'm, I'm sure we'll be looking into that deeper. So by sending us questions ahead of time, it helps us prepare and get actual uh, third-party reviews, technical reviews done. And that's all, that's paid for by the applicant. They, they agree to do that when we, when we, when we need that. So um, uh, I just want to assure you that there will be professionals looking at it. If we need town council, we'll have town council involved as well. Okay. So. Yeah, one more. One more. Yep. I, I had time to list. Okay. Since you're going to be thinking about Your all name? these things, could you just? My name is Philip Hayes. Thank you. Uh, 59 North Hillside Road. Yep. Thank you. Since you're going to be thinking about all these things, we have heard that this is not your father's Dollar General store. This is a $10 store or something like that because it's not going to be the same. When they're talking about all the things that they know as far as traffic count and everything else, are there stores that the town can look at? that are this new type of $10 store, as opposed to Dollar General. Comparable. So I would ask that, if this really is different, if somehow Deerfield is special and we're gonna have a special Dollar General store, <laughs> please, please show us the other stores that you're basing this information on, because if you're basing it on the Dollar General, then maybe they won't apply with this special store. So just, just Again, just general information out there is that um, I believe uh, Dollar General has currently has about 14,000 stores in 44 states, and they're planning on opening 900 more this year. So I'm sure there's examples out there that that we can uh, go to. So. No. One of the other things that we look at is that, um, and this gets both into the site plan review and the special permit, which is a whole other process that the ZBA, the zoning board, will take up is does it fit the character and those kind of things. And I think some of the latest developments that we've had, um, you know, the applicants have tried to make the facade and tried to make it, in, so, it does, so it blends in somehow to the character of the, uh, of the town and the neighborhood. And that's something that I'd, I'd encourage the applicant to look at. Big metal steel buildings um, out on the roadway, I don't, I'm not sure we, we have too many. And if we do, they're older, we'd rather not have them coming in the future. So certainly design is something else that we, we're going to be asking questions about and looking at. So, um, you know, buffers, we did talk, they, they mentioned some things about buffers. The question about the, the DOT, the curb cuts, those kind of things are not our purview. So that's other people taking care of that. Um, and I believe there is some uh, interest in the, the tree clear cutting and whether that was appropriate or not. That's, again, not our purview at the planning board. Um, so please, if that's, you know, if you have questions about that, please, please take it up with the appropriate um, departments there. And I did, uh, we should have said that the, the CONCOM reviewed this and they did not require a, a letter of intent, I believe. There's some, um, you know, wetlands along 5 and 10, and I think Cumberland's had to do that because they had this whale. But I, at this property, I believe the CONCOM said that you didn't have to do that letter of intent. Is that, is that right? I believe so, that correct, yeah. Front, yeah. So... Um, so that's kind of just an overview of how this process is going to go. And just to remind people, again, you might not have been here, whether it was the condos, whether it was Cumberland's, whether it was the storage, we asked a lot of reports from those folks, traffic, uh, stormwater, things like that. So that's, that's what we tend to do because we really want to, you know, once it's built, you can't do much about it. So you want to get, to these, get these answers ahead of time. So. Okay, we're going to come back again another time, but Julie, if you have something yeah. quick. Okay. Julie Cavaco. On North Hillside Road, um, one of my concerns is the traffic light um, that would need to be done, that I don't want the town to have to pay for that um, just because a business is going in. And the second thing- so, so just to remind you, this is not a public hearing anymore. Right, right, this right. is just kind of right, comments, right. so you don't have to get- And then the other thing um, I was thinking of is that uh, I think there should be a five-way, not a four-way there, because if you look at the road it doesn't go that way and also my other concern is that it's going to increase um, traffic on hillside and north hillside road where i live and those are poorly um, 
maintain roads as it stands right now. So Thank you. I'll, I'll write a letter to back it up. Yes. Because I'll be at Monday Night Music at the next, um, <laughs> at the next meeting. Where is that Monday Night Music? Monday Night Music until Library at 7 o'clock. July 2nd with Des Roy. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we, uh, we look forward to having you back um, July 2nd. Okay, so is, is there a motion that needs to be taken for the continue, or is that... I just want to make sure procedurally... It's actually, um, the way it is is you, you have to request it of us, and then we... So um, I would ask the planning board to vote uh, to reschedule the public hearing for July 2nd at 7 o'clock. We initiate the public hearing July 2nd. Continue it. No. No, no. I, no, I think we have to initiate. Yeah. Oh, reopen. Okay. We have to open it yeah. um, July 2nd at 7 o'clock. Um, I'll second that motion. Review the Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Six zero zero. <laughs> so we'll have the public hearing on July 2nd at 7 o'clock regarding the um, uh, construction of the building at the corner of... Mill Village and 5 and 10. Th thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much uh, thank you. for coming tonight and for being interested in this subject. And please, as I said, we, we want to hear from you more. What's next on our agenda? We get mail. I think that's what we have a card. Can I see that list of names? No, they didn't. So, uh, Next time or so. Right. Uh, so any old business? We have none unless anybody knows of any. Anything else new in the past 48 hours? Nope. Set date for the next meeting, July 2nd? Yep. yep. Um, I just signed $4 of postage for the planning board on our behalf. Um, Thank you. We elected officers. Um, anything else? No? Yep. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I, I move that we adjourn. adjourn. Oh, I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.